This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 16. Today, we're going to be talking about advanced navigation techniques, specifically using a device called the Space Navigator. Now, this is prompted by an email that I received from viewer Marcus, who wrote in, one thing that I'm really curious about is how you move so freely inside your model. It doesn't look like the normal pan, zoom, etc. tools. Do you have some kind of external hardware for that, or do you accomplish it with some keyboard or hotkey configuration? Marcus in Germany. Well, Marcus, it is actually uh, some external hardware that I use, and as I said before, it's called the Space Navigator. So today I'm going to show you guys how you can use it to navigate through SketchUp. So first of all, for this demonstration, I wanted to have a model um, that I've worked on before, that I've actually finished, so that we could kind of get a sense of how navigation works with a more complex model. And in this case, this is actually a uh, dining room uh, kitchen model that I worked on uh, several months ago. And you can see it's you know pretty much finished. We've done textures, we've done the furniture, the basic structure of the walls. I've left the ceiling off so that you can kind of move around and see inside of it easier. But uh, we're not going to focus on the model today. We're actually going to focus on the navigation. So in our first, or one of our first episodes, when we were talking about navigation, we talked about how to use a mouse, a mouse like this one right here. Now, when you're using a mouse for navigation in SketchUp, you use um, three buttons primarily. You use, uh, of course, you have your regular left click button right here which is used to click on things and select things in SketchUp. You also have your right click button right here, and that's used to give you a shortcut menu, make groups and uh, things like that. But then you also have to have this center button right here, which oftentimes is actually the click wheel or the little scroll wheel, whatever you want to call that thing. If you click down on that, that's actually oftentimes called the third mouse button or the middle button. Uh, if you click and hold that down, and then move your mouse around, you'll notice that that is automatically switching me to the orbit tool. And that's causing me to rotate around like this. If while I'm doing that, I hold down the shift key at the same time, it switches me into a panning mode. And also with the scroll wheel, if I use the scroll wheel to scroll upwards, it zooms me in. And just uh, the opposite, when I scroll out, it zooms me out. So this is the typical way you would see someone navigate in SketchUp. So for example, if I'm here and I want to move myself so I'm looking into the kitchen, I might use the rotate tool in conjunction with the pan tool like this, zoom in a little bit, and now I'm looking into the kitchen. So that's what you would typically see, this kind of very um, almost jerky movement. Uh, it's usually in stages where it's like pan, orbit, pan, zoom, orbit, pan, orbit, something like that. However, what Marcus was commenting on, and what you may have noticed before, is that when I'm navigating in SketchUp, my movements are very smooth and all in kind of one long motion like this. That's because I actually don't use the mouse. You notice my hands weren't moving on the mouse at all. And the reason that I don't use the mouse for navigating in SketchUp is actually because I don't use a mouse with my computer at all. Instead, I actually use this. This is a graphics tablet from a company called Wacom. You can actually check them out at wacom.com. Uh, and what they are, the way you work with them is you actually have a pen. It looks just like a normal pen, except what you do is you actually wrote, hover it over this surface, and that's how you move your cursor on your computer. And this works with both Macs and PCs. In my case, I'm on a Mac, but a lot of artists like this because a lot of drawing applications like um, Photoshop or Corel Painter support these, and you can actually use it just like a uh, regular pen or a paintbrush. In my case, I really like it because I find it very ergonomic and I can work much more quickly. But the problem with using a pen is that a pen doesn't have the middle click functionality of 
a mouse. And as such, I don't have any way to really control my navigation in SketchUp um, with the pen, which is kind of limiting. Now, this is an extreme example because I don't use a mouse. I use a graphics tablet. But you might run into this same problem if you, for example, have a mouse that doesn't have a scroll wheel or a middle click button. Or if you're on a laptop that doesn't have a mouse at all that actually has just a trackpad. And you know, I mean of course you could use the keyboard shortcuts for the tools O for orbit, Z for zoom, uh vice, you know, all that stuff, but that gets really old having to go up to here to the keyboard every single time you want to uh switch navigation tools, which you do pretty frequently. So as such, I actually use a separate piece of hardware to navigate in SketchUp. And this is it. This is called the Space Navigator, and it's made by a company called 3D Connection or 3D Connection. It really depends on how you want to pronounce it. But um, their website is just 3dconnection.com, and you can check this thing out here. This is a uh, consumer version of something that they call a 3D mouse. So the Space Navigator is their consumer version. They have more pro versions, of course. Um, but uh, you really don't need that if all you're doing is working in SketchUp. I was able to pick this guy up on Amazon for about 50 bucks, 50 or 60 dollars. So it's not all that expensive. But what's really awesome about it is that it's sort of like, it's kind of hard to describe to people, which is why I wanted to show it to you. Uh, it's almost like a joystick for SketchUp. So what you have here is you have this base, which is actually made of metal, and it's very heavy um, intentionally. And then you have this thing up here, which I always say to people kind of looks like a doorknob, <laughs> but it's basically just this cap. And what you do is you actually hold on to it like this. I usually hold on to it, you know, kind of like this or like this or however you want to hold on to it, whatever works. And what you do is you actually use this to navigate in SketchUp. So, for example, uh, let's say I wanted to move forward. What I would do is I would grab the cap and I would push forward on it slightly. And you might not even be able to see that I'm really moving the cap at all. But I actually am. You don't need very much movement. It's very, very subtle. Just like maybe an eighth of an inch will get you going. And the harder you press it, the more, the more you move it, the faster your movements will be. So this is, for example, zooming in and then zooming out, just pulling on it. Uh, if I wanted to move pan maybe uh, up and down, I can just pull up on the cap. This is why you need the base to be so heavy. If it was light, when you start pulling upwards on the cap, you just lift the whole thing. But because the base is so heavy, you can pull up quite a bit, exude quite a bit of pressure. And you can see this is, you can really see the cap moving now, but you can see how much movement that is translating to uh, on the screen. And then I can uh, shift it left and right to move like this as well. However, I actually have much more control than just zooming and panning. Remember, a big part of navigation in SketchUp is orbiting. So I can actually tilt this thing like this. So you see how I'm tilting it left and right like this? Now, I've, in my case, I've disabled rolling from side to side, but let's say I wanted to tilt upwards. Then I can just tilt it back like this, and now you can see, <laughs> for one thing, I'm under the table. Let me just get out from there. That's tilting upwards. Now I can push it forward to go forward with it. It's actually really quite intuitive. I got used to this thing within, I would say, half an hour of using it. It was like I'd been using it my entire life. It really makes navigation in SketchUp feel more like an extension of your arm. And it's very, very intuitive. And what's really cool is that with one of the limitations of using something like a mouse with SketchUp is that you're limited to one command at a time, one action at a time. For example, you can't zoom in as you're rotating, but in the case of this mouse, you can actually do all of the commands at once. You could be zooming, rotating, tilting, and panning all at the same time, like this. And admittedly, you do get used to going through walls pretty quickly, but that, that just happens with SketchUp quite a bit. You end up going through objects. But what's really neat about this is that it's just so intuitive, and it actually makes navigation in SketchUp much, much faster. So, for example, uh, I'm going to do a quick little comparison for you here. If I start way out here, and I'm actually going to use the mouse for this one. If I use the mouse, typical mouse movements, to zoom in on, let's say I want to zoom in on this clock right here. I would have to go like this, 
Start zooming in like this. Keep scrolling, adjust a little bit. Zoom in to fill. There we go. So now I've zoomed in on the clock. So that, you know, that didn't take too long, maybe five or 10 seconds. But let me show you if I zoom back out to where I was. So that's about where I was. If I switch back to the Space Navigator and I want to zoom in on the clock, that's it. That's all it took. You just need to almost push at the object you want to zoom in on, if that makes any sense at all. It might not. It really is a very intuitive and very, it's a very natural experience and it kind of helps to have like a physical connection between you and your model. When you're working with a mouse, there really isn't a connection between what you're doing with your hands and what you're seeing on screen. For example, like scrolling like this with your finger, you don't, in, your brain doesn't automatically think, okay, I'm going like this. That means that that's going to zoom in or I'm going like this. That means that the screen is going to rotate. No, your brain doesn't think that. But if you're actually interfacing with a physical object like this, when you twist that object, the camera in SketchUp twists. And it's really very, very intuitive, very natural, and you get very, very fast at it. And what's really cool about it is you actually have quite a bit of control over um, the actual uh, navigator itself and in terms of what it does to SketchUp. So let me show you uh, what you can do to it. So what I have right here, these are the uh, preferences. Uh, this is in a, on a Mac. A PC has slightly different um, preferences in terms of look and feel, but uh, basically the same settings. What I have here is, this is in my Mac system preferences, and these, this is the driver that gets installed for the, the Space Navigator. And you can see up here, it says Configure Google SketchUp. You click here and it has a list of all of these applications that it supports, uh, which it supports not just SketchUp, it also supports things like um, a lot of Adobe products, Photoshop, um, a lot of professional applications like Maya or uh, ArchiCAD. Uh, also Google Earth, which is a free um, application that Google has. Uh, kind of like a Google Maps except a standalone app. It works beautifully in there. But what's really cool is that if I just select Google SketchUp, I'm now configuring the settings specifically for Google SketchUp. So let's say, for example, you wanted to have it so that it's a little bit less sensitive, so you have to kind of push more on the device to cause the same amount to happen on the screen. Say, you know, I mean, like right now, I have mine turned up right around to the middle overall speed here. If I were to turn this way up like this, then back in SketchUp, just the smallest push would send me whizzing into like the next dimension. Whereas if I turn it back over to the left, I'm gonna have to push really, really hard on the navigator to cause it to move. So right around here is where I'm comfortable, but you can completely adjust it the way you want to. You can change how the zooming um, uh, is achieved, basically. You can either have it being pulling up and down to zoom or pushing in and out. That's how I like it. Over in here, you can see that you can actually um, reverse the axes. So like say, for example, you think that twisting to the left should turn the image to the right. You can do that. You can disable certain functions. The, but the, the navigator actually also has two buttons. If you look here, it actually has two small buttons on the sides, one on the left, one on the right. Those can actually be um, programmed to do certain things within SketchUp. So for example, I actually have uh, the left button set to open up this settings pane. You can see on the left right here, I have it set to open the preference pane, but I could have it switch to a different tool in SketchUp. I could have it um, toggle the axis. I could have it increase or decrease the sensitivity of the navigator. I could even have it do my own custom keystroke if I wanted to. And uh, I have the right button set to camera mode. And I'm actually going to show you that in just a minute. But lastly, we have the advanced tab. You can control the speed of each individual function of the navigator. So for example, I have my spin, which you can see right here. That's when I'm twisting the navigator left and right. I actually have that speed increased quite a bit because I, I like to spin a little bit more, a little bit faster than I like to say zoom, for example. And you can see I have, uh, have my zoom turned down just a little bit. 
because I found that when I was zooming in and out, it was going a little bit too fast for me. So you have a lot of control over this. And then once you install the driver, one of the things you're going to notice is you might think, well, it's instantly going to work with SketchUp, right? Well, no, it actually needs to install a plugin in SketchUp. And if you actually click on this drop down here, again, this is on a Mac, it might be different on a PC. But if you go down here and you look for the setting that says um, install plugins right here, if you click on that, then it's going to install the SketchUp plugin. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close this. And you can see that in SketchUp, there's actually a little thing in the menu bar right here that says plugins. If I click on that, I actually have, th these are the two plugins I have installed. One is cost, where I can assign, a, 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 I can actually assign um, a monetary value to a particular object, and it will calculate how much a room is going to cost me, which is kind of nice, but this is the 3DX SketchUp. Th these are the settings for the Space Navigator. Now in SketchUp, its default, I'll show you what its default is. When you first launch SketchUp, this is what it's going to be like. It's The axes are almost kind of reversed. In other words, the way that the default Space Navigator settings work is you're, t you're not moving your camera. You're actually moving your model in relation to your camera. And it's not very intuitive. It's kind of the opposite of what you want to have happen. So instead, what I like to do is I like to, the instant I launch SketchUp, I go up to Plugins, 3DX SketchUp, and then right here you'll notice this little checkbox that says Camera Mode. If you click that, that gets you into this very intuitive mode, uh, which I like better. You might like the other mode a little bit better, but um, that's the way I like it. You also have, I talked about disabling the rolling. It automatically disables the rolling. If you uncheck that, then you notice I can do these bizarre tilts basically opens up everything in the navigator but I don't really like that I never find myself needing to tilt myself left or right in my SketchUp model like this or like that if you find yourself uh, needing to do that by all means go ahead and disable that but uh, I like to keep that uh, checked to make sure that I don't end up giving myself uh, seasickness or something because it, it does get a little bit weird but uh, if you just leave it at its default and then turn on camera mode, it really does work very, very nicely within SketchUp. And you'll notice that uh, as we've been navigating around the room, I'm sure you've noticed that things are in color. There are these photo textures that I've added. And we're actually going to start talking about how to color the living room model that we've been working on the last few episodes next time. So there you have it. The Space Navigator is an incredibly powerful and easy to use tool for use with SketchUp. And they have two versions that I would recommend. One is the desktop version that I have, but one is actually a notebook version, a little small portable version that they sell as well. Both are absolutely fantastic. And on our website, www.harwardpodcast.com, we'll have links in the show notes for this uh, episode uh, to Amazon where you can buy those. And if you have any questions or comments for me, like Marcus did, you can send me an email at Cameron at HarwoodPodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling. <laughs>